Karen Duvac. She's one of the curators at the Museum of Anthropology in Vancouver. She's speaking right now about the exhibition Pleased to Meet You, Introductions by Gwyn Hanson Piggott, the Australian ceramicist. Okay, I'm speaking here with Karen Dufek, who is one of the curators here at the exhibition. Karen, what can you uh, tell me about what we're about to see this evening? It, it's a very personal look at the museum's collection through the eyes of Gwyn Hansen Pickett, who's a ceramicist from Australia. And um, she does very uh, beautiful, minimalist type of ceramic ware herself. And she arranges her vessels, they go often these long necked vases and open simple bowls. She arranges them in groupings and, and so what she's done here is she has some of her groupings of his, her work in the gallery but it alternates with um, exhibit cases that have groupings of museum artifacts in them so she's kind of mined the collection in a way oh. and she's, she's drawn things out of the collection that just visually appeal to her. Okay. With pure aesthetics, so she's not concerned at all with the context for, of things, the histories, the p p particular uh. lives of these objects. She's just looking at them in terms of their color, their translucency, like other kind of visual qualities like that. And so she's done these amazing groupings of things, and it, the exhibit's called Pleased to Meet You because essentially it's these objects that get to meet each other that normally in the museum don't have uh. that opportunity. So one of the really enjoyable exhibit cases in that show is uh, it contains a number of things and one of them is a new channel model canoe from the west coast filled with Ukrainian Easter eggs <laughs> and it's absolutely fantastic to see the two together and it, it completely disrupts the kind of curatorial work that we now do which is very much very sensitive to context to cultural meaning to yeah. all these kind of cultural sensitivities and she just throws that all away and just and just gets us really to look at the object again and it's it's funny because it's almost a radical thing to do that's right i think it used to be more common and now we've gone away from that looking at the object yeah and now she's drawing us back into that again by making these relationships about qualities that they really open your eyes to seeing this thing differently and yeah. so you know there's no labels um, there's a key to the objects in the little publication that goes with it. So if you really want to know what that thing is, you can find out. But in the exhibit itself, you're just like they're just freed these objects from any sort of history. They're just there in a new type of arrangement. There are two curators of the show, Carol Mayer and um, a, a guest curator from Toronto. And so they work together a little bit. And, and Wynne Hanson Pickett, the artist, she started by using the museum's online collection. So oh. anybody can access the museum's entire collection through our website, anything, okay. which is a fantastic resource. Yeah. And so she did a lot of that she, you know, to, be get, to begin to get her first ideas of what she was interested in looking at. Then she spent uh, some time here, I think it was in the spring, actually looking through the collection and beginning to choose objects. Okay. And then when she was here now again, she had basically figured out what was going to go with what, but then the arrangements are very, very particular. So working together with the designer then and moving things one centimeter here, one centimeter, you know, getting the lighting just right. Um, you know, she knows exactly, exactly how she wants it to be, what the effect is. So, so the whole thing is like one installation, you know, from her point of view. Okay, we're back here on CITR Radio, and that there was uh, an interview I recorded with Karen Dufek. She is one of the curators at the Museum of Anthropology in Vancouver, and she was speaking about the exhibition Pleased to Meet You, the introductions by Gwyn Hanson Piggott. Gwyn is an Australian ceramicist. She's, she lives in Ipswich, Queensland, and she's world-renowned, and she was invited to Vancouver to... Uh, put on this exhibition where she was uh, granted access to the uh, anthropological uh, collection, granted access to anything really uh, within reason. She was guided by the staff there to pick out articles that uh, she admired because of their uh, beauty and form and to place them together in, uh, in, in the exhibition unrelated to context. So this is it wasn't in historical anthropological um, enterprise at all. It was purely aesthetic. Really interesting. So myself and Megan of the Arts Report here at CITR, we went along with our voice recorder and recorded our own reactions to what we were seeing. 
Here we are at the Museum of Anthropology for the exhibition called Pleased to Meet You, Introductions by Gwyn Hanson Pigott, who is a, an Australian artist, a ceramicist, and this is a very fascinating exhibition that's outside the norm. Yeah, the first thing you notice as soon as you come in is that there's no plaques on any of the works, and this is a really specific thing to museums where people are really used to at looking at the writing about what the object is, and they do that with art galleries as well, so it's refreshing to just get to look at the objects. I'm Megan, I'm the arts director. And my name's Matt, contributor to the show. The first thing I'm noticing with the very first piece is just the difference in textures. Three different pieces, a beautifully smooth ceramic bowl, obviously, well, I would assume made by Gwyn, and then we have a, like a statue, an old statue, with, uh, which is kind of beheaded, crumbling old statue. Who knows how old it is? And that's with a, um, a very delicate-looking um, Asian fan, one of those ones you, you wave, um, you're holding your hand and wave uh, in front of your face on a hot day. So three completely different textures from three completely different eras that we have no idea about. I like how it really, these types of projects really take advantage of the thing that your brain wants to do where they it wants to create a story mm. it wants to group things that's yeah. why our brains are so amazing but so you kind of want to create a story for it even though it's it's not random it's um it's yeah purely aesthetic but yeah. we want to create a meaning for the collection so part of viewing this collection is kind of a, a meditative space is really the best a zen-like approach no categorizing. This one I notice there's four different creatures all looking the same direction. One a human, some kind of statue, and another a little um, canoe with a little man, and then a couple of birds, and they're all looking north, south, I'm not sure what direction that is. West, West. The water. Yeah. It definitely looks like they're go like this is a, a like a. They're all going on a trip together. With their Easter egg canoe, because the other ones, <laughs> the other ones, a huge, big, long, long boat filled with stunningly colored, decorated. I wonder what culture those are. I mean, they remind me of those little Russian dolls, you know, mm -hmm. but then, but they're not. Yeah, they have like an Eastern European look to them. One mild criticism at this point, the, I mean, an entire museum of things, why repeat yourself at all? I mean, there's a, f a few fans here. Oh, I have more than one. I mean, you could pick something up. There's a Pan Pacific kind of feel to it. And the colors are very neutral with these like pops of red. And so I think that's also like a very kind of modernist approach to like the Pan Pacific kind of color scheme. Oh. Uh. Like there she's trying, it looks like she's trying to keep a very natural kind of feel. Yeah, this, this color scheme is all congruent. It's all earthy, wooden. I like, I think this one is really, it's first of all, it's different than all the others. There's no earthenware, mm. there's no fan. No color, but like very, like it's almost impossible to figure out what some of these things might have been for. And they don't look completely artistic. I mean, some of them do. These look like egg beaters or yeah. something. Or like, um, you know, those like shaving brushes. Yeah, that's it. Some of these articles are utilitarian, others are not. Some are purely just trinkets and pretty things but some of them look like yeah they were they could be used like the fans or you know yeah so it's whisk these are japanese whisks so japanese uh and indonesian weaving basketry it's interesting to to see the just in the video see them kind of working on them and then to see them in the case 
It has a lot more life when you've taken off all the tags and have the lighting and stuff. Mm. Yeah, it'd be interesting to come back in six months and see where these are actually in the, mm -hmm. the normal exhibition, you know, yeah. and then their regular place. It would be interesting to see, like, to know when was the last time some of these pieces were seen. That's it, if these little statues could talk, they're probably like, this is my style moment. This yeah. Is, for 40 years I've been out the back, finally. Well, I certainly get a sense that uh, Gwyn um, experienced a lot of joy doing this. It's, a, it's quite a, a privilege and an honour to spend this much time to give them mostly free reign. I mean, there would have been some guidelines, but to turn her own aesthetic um, appreciation to these works is a pretty, pretty neat thing to do. It, it gives them like kind of a modern life to like a, a, a new... Um, it still kind of respects them as they are, the objects uh, as they are, for themselves as artistic creations. Because a lot of stuff you find in an anth anthropology museum are u useful objects or ceremonial objects. You know, they're cultural artifacts uh, as much as decorative. Like I'm mingling together of all these local cultures, kind of seeing how they're different, how they're similar. What you just heard there was myself and Megan from the Arts Report and our reactions to what we were seeing as we walked through the exhibition, looking at the objects themselves and just saying what came to mind. So let's play now my interview with the star of the show herself, Gwyn Hansen Piggott, a very, very well-renowned and respected ceramicist. In terms of your, I mean, the whole point of all this was to be kind of spontaneous with your real aesthetic reactions to things. Yes. So did you have a real, like you had emotional responses to certain images on, online and then when you got here, did it change or did, did different experiences happen when you really got present? Well, online I could only really um, look at what was here, but till I got here and could see things in relationship to each other, that's when the, the uh, cases came together. The magic happened, yes, yeah. Yes. And, and, and is it, it's, so this is what you call an art intervention? Well, I don't call it that, but oh. uh, Sue, called, Sue <laughs> Jeffries called it that, uh, because um, I suppose she's, and she's giving a talk today, mm. and she's talking about how artists go into museums and work with museums. I hadn't known that phrase. So, so that's just, I guess, my, I don't know, I wouldn't go, I don't know, this is, it is an intervention. I see, yeah, because I was just thinking, is this, is this a movement? But it, you, I mean, you sort of came up as your own kind of idea and you're doing it anyway, and I was wondering, are there other yes, Gwyns uh, elsewhere doing this? Uh, yes, indeed. And, um, yes, she's, she's talking about that today. Oh, so interesting. The British Museum and other yeah. museums. I think it's a wonderful thing to do. Yeah. It's, I mean, really, for me as a layperson, it's sort of like you're living out our fantasy yes. of, like, you're in a museum and it's all the don't touch, don't touch, don't touch, yes, yes. and you're going for it, and I think it's great. It was very exciting. I wasn't always allowed to touch. You know, I could just point and then technical assistants or people here working in the museum with light gloves would move them around, and only very, every now and again I was allowed to put on light gloves and move them around myself. <laughs> that was good. And it's such a, a different experience, especially f you know for people visiting. And it's almost hard. You've got to almost force yourself because you're so used to contextualising. That's right. No, 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 no. You have to stop doing that. Yes, yes, that's true. But some of them I still don't know where they're from or how mm. old they are. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I just was looking at them as beautiful objects or interesting objects or yeah, interesting combinations, really. And I got really excited by some things like the Easter eggs the boat and the umbrella. Um, and uh, like what are, what are your next steps from here once this exhibition is done uh, in terms of your life work? Well I'm about to have an exhibition in London, um, well uh, not till next May uh, in London. I'm also hopefully going back to Japan to work with a Japanese potter. I was there earlier this year for three months and that was really 
great for me to work in a different environment totally. Some of the work is in the exhibition actually. I made little rough balls I made in Shigaraki. When you're not travelling, where are you based? In I'm Australia? based in Australia, in Ipswich. Have you oh. been to Ipswich? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. I grew up in Gladstone, which oh, is um, right. yes. central. I used to be inland from Mackay for about 11 years, at the base of Yungala National Park. Isolated and very, very beautiful. There for 11 years. And, and it, it is what I miss the most yes. about Australia, is just the, the nature. Wow. And it was wonderful that last night the exhibition was opened by Her Excellency Louise Hand the Australian um, attaché. A long, 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 long time ago, we had worked together. Um, she used to be um, managing the flying art school out of Brisbane. We used to fly out over Queensland or to all these outback places and with a painter and a potter and sometimes she would come on a pilot. Because of that, I got such a sense of Queensland. I'm from Victoria, so... But when I decided where to settle, uh, I wanted to be in an isolated place in Queensland. Oh. I fell in love with the landscape. Now that's interesting, and I, wow! So art, and so this is like the Flying Doctors, but with art. Yes, yes. They yes. actually did that. Yes, we did that. We did that for years in the eighties. Yes. What a radical idea! Is yeah. I wonder if they still do it. I, I mean, think maybe, they still do it. They really yes. do. It was started by an artist who also was a pilot. His oh. name is Merv Moriarty, and he used to go out, and then it developed into enterprise. Enterprise, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Enterprise. So, I mean, I can imagine yeah. just to, to give give people what was it to to, to teach people, or mm. was it to? Well, you'd be amazed at how many outback little groups of potters and little groups of painters, people who come for a hundred kilometres and meet once a month to to paint together or make pots in a shearing shed, or oh. you know. Uh, People out there who are so isolated but need need to be doing something and need to be meeting other like just a basic like human yes. human impulse, yeah. Yes. So that was Gwyn Hanson Piggott herself, the artist who is responsible for the fantastic exhibition Please to Meet Me at the Museum of Anthropology. And uh, up next now, we're going to talk to a gentleman that I ran into randomly in the uh, museum looking at the exhibition. His name is John Valiant, and he is an author of a very well-regarded uh, book written uh, here in BC called The Golden Spruce. So I asked John Valiant about his reaction to the exhibition. It's, this is something that most artists or people who appreciate art would dream of having the chance to do, you know, to essentially play in a museum like this and just make connections and assemblages and see relationships that are completely subjective. And yeah, because yeah. so much of what happens here is really tightly constrained by decorum and protocol and scholarship. And to be able to come in purely as a, a kind of an educated centralist and just feel the connections and use your eyes and senses and, you know, other senses, see what communicates with what, you know, is really, it's, well, it's almost a unique privilege. I mean, who else, who else has had the chance to do it? And on the other hand, there are very few people you would even want to entrust. And it's, uh, so what a treat. So I'm, as someone who's really into objects and art, getting a lot of vicarious pleasure by uh, witnessing this, so... You talk the educated centralist. It's that's an interesting expression because I was thinking like, yeah, myself, like anyone could do this, but it's like, no, I don't have that. I don't have that sensibility. I don't. I can't. Well, and no well, one would do it the same. You yeah, know? yeah. Even you know, say a curator. It'd be interesting to have ask a curator who knew the collection intimately and just what's your favorite stuff? Knock yourself out, you know? And that would be interesting too, but you're here to have someone come in from outside, you know, way outside, other side of the planet, and, and yet have free reign, but also who's paid really heavy dues in terms of mm. working with the material and seeing and feeling and learning. So it's just earned the right. Mm, you know? Yeah, yeah. Even if it wasn't in this environment, in terms of being an aesthetic being and somebody who is reveres materials and yeah. knows how to treat them in transformative ways. So totally. Very cool. 
So that was the voice of British Columbian author John Valiant. He ha happened to be attending the exhibition opening for Pleased to Meet You, Introductions by Gwyn Hanson Piggott. And I had my voice recorder handy and he gave me his insights right there in the moment. So if you are in Vancouver and keen to check that exhibition out, it's at the Museum of Anthropology. It's on until the 24th of March of 2013. More, more information at moa.ubc.ca.